Hi, my name is Phil Putaman. I work with Verizon in Corporate Social Responsibility uh, Department. I'm actually pretty excited about coming to you today to talk about the future of education with 5G. Now, before I can get to you uh, some information about 5G, let me start the presentation with a video which helps us kind of set the tone for what the future might look like from science fiction. And then we'll be right back. Welcome to the future. Transporter room. Kurt speaking. A digital frontier to reshape the human condition. You are now entering a safety zone. Welcome to the world's first artificially intelligent operating system. Computer, compute to the last digit the value of pi. Quiet, please. I am analyzing. I would like to personally introduce you to the city of the future. Technology is infinite possibilities for mankind. Welcome back to the gap. Hi, Mom. Lisa, hello. Hello, I'm Johnny Cap. Where can I take you tonight? Match, Mr. Incredible. We can rebuild you. We have the technology. To create an artificial being has been the dream of man since the birth of science. It's perfect. It's unbelievable. It could change the world. When will then be now? Soon. So that video gives us a little bit of an idea of some of the movies we've seen, some of the future we've imagined over the course of our lives. And as we think through what what's possible with technology, that's actually taking us to where we are today with 5G. Now, we're not going to be right there with the Jetsons or uh, with all the different things we saw in the movies uh, over the years with uh, Minority Report and Arnold Schwarzenegger, etc. But 5G it does have a lot of possibilities. So let me start with where we came from as a start. So 1G, if you remember back to the early 80s, uh, quite a while ago, uh, 1G came to our shores, and it actually helped us to untether from the house, un untether from the office, and we can actually be out in the world talking with others uh, over cellular connection. And again, 1G was an analog voice uh, uh, communication style, but it actually was a game changer. Now, if you look at 2G, you fast forward about a decade to the early 90s. The early 90s brought us digital voice with text messaging and a much higher capacity. Fast forward another decade to 3G. So this is the early 2000s. And again, a huge difference in what we were able to accomplish over 2G. Now, I don't know if any of you were as addicted to this as I was, but the BlackBerry was you know, constantly in our palm. We were trying to get data and applications over that. Now, you fast forward another decade, and that is the actual real game changer, 4G LTE managed to put the power of a supercomputer in the palm of our hands. Now that is a game changer overall. It really has enabled us to be able to do almost anything, right? So imagine I was in this conference with you physically, right? We can't do that today, but uh, in 2010, let's say, and I told you, hey, I'm going to press a button on my phone and a car is going to arrive to take me to my destination. You would be, oh, I'm not sure about that. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we're able to do with mobile computing has really been a paradigm shift in our thinking. And that takes us to 5G. Last year, we introduced 5G into a number of cities around the country, and we're going to be dramatically increasing that this year as well. Now, 5G for you, if you look at this chart, it actually gives you a little bit of an idea of what's possible for yourselves. Whether you're an educator, a developer, um, a gamer, whatever it might be, a game developer, game designer, whatever you might be in your in your line of work, what's really exciting about some of the capability of 5G, I just wanted to highlight a few. So one is just faster data speeds and much higher data volume, right? So what that enables is much richer visual communication. So imagine some of the applications you use, they're just going to be that much more um, you know, enhanced with 5G. The second thing is ultra low latency. Now when you think of low latency, What's exciting about that is when you think of the idea of edge computing, we're actually bringing the computing power closer to the end user. 
So what happens there is imagine you're in virtual reality. Now, many of you have been in a virtual reality uh, roller coaster, perhaps, and gotten kind of nauseous. Well, those experiences will change over 5G, mainly because with the lower latency, actually, it doesn't really feel like to the human eye that there's that much different than what we're actually looking at normally you know, off the screen. And then the final thing is longer battery life. Now, that takes us to when you think of glasses like this. Now, this, this slide is a few months old now. But even if you think of with the apples coming out uh, in a year or two, what's exciting is imagine I'm at this conference in the future. I need to find out something right off, right off the bat. And I can just kind of wave my hand right on my glasses, and I'll be able to see whatever I need to see, which is very kind of minority report Tom Cruise, if you think of the movies that we just uh, played. But that takes us to what we're doing in uh, Verizon in education. So this space was actually a library. And we kept the basic functionality of the library, put all the books uh, on the racks into those 15 carts that you see on the side. And what's exciting about it is we took out all the carpet, kept the original flooring, ripped out the ceilings, put industrial lighting in, put in these moving tables uh, right out of other maker spaces we've modeled it after, and put in a virtual reality studio in the back. And this is a true maker space that allows kids to really collaborate within project-based learning. And this allows kids to become producers rather than just consumers of data. Now, this is a broader for Verizon outside of this innovative learning lab. This sits within our Verizon Innovative Learning Schools program, which is 250 schools around the country, which are high free reduced lunch, over 80%. And we provide tablets primarily with some Chromebooks uh, in some cases, connected to our 4G LTE, along with professional development and STEM curriculum. Now, what that does for us is it enables us to have a network of schools that we can provide not only the latest technology, but the support to the teachers to allow them to actually be able to use the technology properly. Now, from this lab, we've grown into uh, a number of labs around the country. But what's exciting is we put 5G in the first of our two schools last year in Cleveland. Now, that's going to be growing in the country over the coming years. We're going to be at 100 5G schools by 2021. But with the advent of 5G, it took this makerspace to the next level. So then we had something called the 5G EdTech Challenge. We had organizations like you see here, World Science Festival, in collaboration with Columbia. They came up with this experience, which is called Visceral Science. So if you see in the uh, diagram below uh, my, my image, imagine we're in this virtual reality experience together, and it's multi-user, and we see things simultaneously. And we are actually learning about the formation of stars and planets and understanding interplanetary science. Now, a great anecdote that I like to tell is uh, our CFO was visiting a school in North Carolina, and we actually had a young woman who actually was explaining this uh, program to him and was explaining nebulas and the formation of stars and at the end I was blown away and I asked her had you known any of this before you use this program she said no and I go what do you want to do with your future And she said I think I want to study science now that is an exciting advancement it's anecdotal but it just gives you an example of what's possible with some of the technology that uh, only available through 5G Mapper's Delight is an AR experience where it allows students, let's say you and I are in this experience together, along with the class, and we're actually listening to our favorite hip hop artists and understanding geographical references from their songs. So maybe they're pointing to Shanghai, to London, to New York, to Tokyo, and we're seeing these geographical arcs around the world. I can see what you're, what you're experiencing, you can see what I'm experiencing, we're learning together, maybe learning a variety of different subjects through that. And we can actually go and 3D print our arcs. And there's a lot to this program, which is pretty exciting through the advent of augmented reality. Again, multi-user, simultaneous through VR, uh, through 5G. Excuse me. Now, this is the next experience coming in the future. So we went from the 5G EdTech Challenge applications, who were the winners of our competition, to new applications that we're building through our subsidiary, Riot, in LA. Now, this is an example of a hologram that it's going to be harnessing 5G in the sense that if you think of the hologram you see in front of you, Serena Williams, we were lucky enough to work with. And what happens as a student is I get to interact with my hologram and I get to actually have a back and forth conversation with her or him. And I ask them a question, they go down a path and answer a question, etc. And it goes down a narrative arc. Now, 
besides Serena, who we're focusing on her entrepreneurial ability, we actually have a number of STEM professionals in this application, such as people from Verizon, Google, and Snap. And what's exciting is a student gets to talk to someone who may look like them, comes from the similar background, but actually is really doing really interesting work that they never even would have heard of otherwise. And through the advent of 5G, you can scroll through these holograms as if it's watching a movie on Netflix, and you can pick what you want to watch, download it instantaneously, and go ahead and watch it, either on an iPad or even on the HoloLens too. And finally, another one I wanted to highlight is this is an AR application called Aurelia, uh, again with our uh, our subsidiary Riot working with a director in LA. And this actually creates a kind of water ecosystem on your iPad. So what ends up happening is, imagine we're all in a science class together, and simultaneously we are creating fish based on our inputs, based on what type of water it is, and we put them all into the water at the same time. And this again is a really amazing multi-user experience and we get to learn about water ecosystems using augmented reality, harnessing 5G. So this is just a short example of a number of the applications we're working on here at Verizon. And we wanted to give you just a, a snapshot, just so you have an idea as you think through various applications that you're developing, that you might be using, you might be applying that technology in your, um, in your work, that you can actually uh, imagine what the, pu the future looks like with 5G. Again, we didn't know what was possible with the mobile device in 2010. And similarly, we may not really know the capability of what we have in our hands coming uh, later this year uh, as you start to get more 5G devices out there. So again, I'm more than happy to answer questions after this session, but I really thank you for the time uh, of having me as part of this. And what I really want to do is leave you with a video from our 5G EdTech Challenge applications just to see what some of those top 10 winners uh, in our competition uh, were able to do. So with that, I'll off hand off to the video. Thank you. There's so much need in our public schools. They're looking for ways to engage their students. They're looking for new and exciting tools that they can use to teach. We launched the EdTech Challenge to find 5G solutions that can increase engagement, increase achievement, and really prepare students for the workforce of the future. Teachers typically have whiteboards or blackboards. You can just go so far in communicating abstract ideas with those tools. But take that very same kid out of the classroom and put them into the environment that they are exploring. Then the experience is radically different. 5G is great for classrooms because it provides the high bandwidth, low latency applications that can truly engage students and bring things that are intangible to life. Like started as a two-person VR project. Thanks to the support from this Verizon EdTech Challenge, we've moved it into augmented realities. Covet is a project that incorporates AR and VR to create a dynamic, cooperative, problem-solving environment in the classroom. Our project aims to give kids a real deep, visceral, intuitive understanding of where stars and planets come from. By using 5G, we're able to use augmented reality, not just for an individual student, but for groups who can look at the same simulation and together dissect the cell, solve problems, and collaboratively engage in learning processes. Unsung focuses on four female musicians of color throughout history who have used their voices to advocate for social change. Kids can see narratives of people that look like them, but also expose them to technologies that they have never really seen before so they can kind of envision themselves as a part of the future. The kids are really good at asking, where's my representation in this? And then you have to start explaining to them, well, it's a database and no databases that were complete. They start understanding what data science is about. We've got all these kids working to build these planets and to set them into orbit. And this is a heart-pounding experience for the kids. And they come out the other side saying, wow, that was amazing. Now I get it. Kids get to play with cutting-edge technology. This makes it more cooperative, way more engaging, way more exciting. What could be better than, than that? So thanks again for your time today. I appreciate your patience uh, with 
my, my presentation. And I actually look forward to hearing some questions uh, after this session. So thanks again, and I look forward to working with you in the future with 5G. Thank you.